So yesterday we had done till here, where you can actually fire bullets from any position or turn into any direction and start firing bullets. Your movements are fixed. The characters can easily move into any direction that you want. Actually, you need a lot of mastery for this character to move in a certain direction. Uh, okay, so that is how you move it. And you are shooting bullets in any direction that you are facing. To, okay, if you think that it is turning very slowly, you can make it turn quickly by going to the shooter. <coughs> and telling it to turn 10 degrees every time. And then you would see that it is turning more quickly now. See, it's easier to turn now. Similarly, you can change this value from 10 to, let's say, 20. And that would turn it more quickly. So this is how it is turning at 20 degrees. You can see the speed. And if I change it to 10, the speed is slower. And if I change it to five, the speed is, um, speed is going to become even slower. So let's take it to 10 or 15, that it would be enough. 15, change this to 15 as well. Change this to 15 as well and change this to 15 as well. So now the turn and movement of the object is kind of pretty quick. So it's moving quickly, it's turning quickly. So you can start shooting in any direction that you want. Also, the shooting speed I feel is fine, but I would want the shoots to be separated with 0 0.1 seconds difference. So it's kind of like that now. It's happening more quickly. Now, another thing that you would want to do with the bullets is as you can see these yellow marks here at the bottom. So these are here because your bullets are actually firing and they are standing at one place. You can see it here as well and you can see it on this side as well. They are getting collected at one place. So we need to tell our project to kill the bullets or maybe uh, delete the bullets if they touch the wall. So for that, we are going to go to controls, set a control for that. Now you do not need to put this block here in forever, in this forever. You actually need to put it in the block of the clone. When it starts as a clone, it needs to keep following. And when the clone touches the edge, we are going to delete this clone. That's right. Okay. Now, when you will hit it, you will see that the clones are being deleted as soon as they hit the edge. Now let's go to the next thing that is introducing enemies here. So enemies can be just like our shooters, but they would have different, a little different, uh, you can say, appearance. Uh, their size can be a little smaller. And also they would be moving randomly. They do not have to be uh, following our instructions to move. They should actually move automatically. So for that, we are going to duplicate this object. And now I'm going to go to costumes and in this costume, I'm going to make some changes. The first change that I should make is I'm going to delete the parts that I don't need. These arms, I'm going to make them a little wider like that. And this one also somewhere here and I'm going to turn it. Just put it at the right place where I think it should be.
and after we are done with this one we can change the color of this uh, you can say it's not shooter it's let's say we are going to call it a zombie let's change the color of the zombie so i am going to make it a little sort of this dull dry green color so this is the this is the zombie right now the next thing that i would do is reduce its size make it smaller in comparison to the shooter so that there are more zombies that can come on the screen and we can easily see them now i'm going to select it and just put it in the middle where it is supposed to be now i need to start writing the code for this zombie that how it is going to appear on the screen so i will start with the first zombie as one zombie first so we are going to start with only having let's say one zombie at the start so this one zombie at the start let's say it's going to start here towards the right side of your scratch window so delete everything do this stuff and just start with everything from scratch so i am going to tell it to go to if i put it here can you see what is the position of x here that is 230 so let's say i'm going to ask it to go to x 230 and for y i am going to ask it to put random pick random value and that random value is like from top to bottom so let's see the top value it is 160 So I'm going to put one sixty here, minus one sixty first, and then positive one sixty. Right, Agni? Okay. So now, whenever you are going to start this game, this character is going to be on the rightmost side of the screen. One part is complete. Fine. Now let's see what we do need to do next. The next thing is that this character should be facing towards the shooter. So I'm going to say point towards shooter, and this is going to happen. So now you can see that this is always pointing towards the shooter. So it starts with pointing towards the shooter. the next thing that we do is ask this character simply to start moving okay so we are going to say ask this character to start moving in order to make it move i am going to go to Okay, so now you see what is happening is this character can start from anywhere and it always would be pointing towards the shooter. Now, what is the next thing that we need to do? The next thing that we need to do is make this character move on screen. So, in order to make it move on screen, I am going to go to controls, pick up a forever block, and just ask it to move forward. Let's say. Five steps. Now this is going to happen. You think that five steps are like very fast? So let's say make it two steps. Now this is quite manageable and it's quite easy for us. We can even make it one, and that would also work. Slowly, it's going to follow the character. you can shoot this character like that so nothing is happening when you shoot it because you haven't put it in
Okay, what happens when this character touches the wall? You would want it to, let's say, bounce back. So it bounces back and starts walking again. And when it is going and going and going and going and it touches the other wall, this character is going to start coming back on the screen once again. See? So now, this is what is happening. So let's say that you can give this character some lives also. Lives in the term of that, let's say you shoot it first time, it would not disappear. You shoot it second time, it would not disappear. You shoot it third time, and it would disappear. We can do that also, but let's first try to figure out how we can kill this uh, zombie. So we have to tell this zombie. Forever, it's going to check if it is touching a bullet. It's basically going to do that once again. Now let's say that you shoot this character. You can see that it starts coming from the other side, and it's now becoming difficult for you. Also, you can see the bullet. Bullet actually doesn't stop anywhere. Bullet is actually straight going to the wall even after hitting the zombie. So what you need to do is. Tell your bullet to stop if it touches this um, zombie. So we are going to go to the shooter and say that if you touch the bullet, sorry, I am going to tell this to the bullet that if it touches, similarly it's deleting the clone when it's touching the edge. So I am going to just copy that, put it here like that, and tell it that if it touches. The zombie is going to delete the bullet also. So now you would see that if the bullet is touching, actually nothing has happened. Nothing is happening now because it's getting deleted. So if it is touching zombie, then let's say we add some weight here. We need to add some weight here so that when this uh, bullet touches the zombie, it should wait for one second before deleting this clone. So let's say that I go to controls, add this weight here, and just tell it to wait for 0 0.2 seconds, then delete the clone. So now you can see that it's kind of working perfectly fine for us. If you think that this wait time is more and doesn't look good on your screen, what you can do is try to reduce this wait time. Make it 0 0.1 seconds, let's say. Now we see what happens. It's kind of better. It's kind of better now. Now what we can do next part is that how to calculate score and how to, the next part that we need to do now is to calculate how we are going to get the score in this game and what happens if the shooter touches the zombie. So we are going to say that if shooter, go to the shooter score and tell it that if it Touches sensing, go to touching. If this character is touching the zombie, you are going to simply 
hide this character and stop everything. Stop everything and just add one more thing. That one simple thing is that change the backdrop. And the looks change the backdrop. So we are going to say switch to backdrop and create a backdrop here which says let's say that background this backdrop says just duplicate this backdrop before making any changes to it. In the second backdrop, right? Sir. Yes. Uh, when we uh, when the arrow gets thrown to the green one, we catch it and then it will throw back to, and then it will throw it back to the purple one, right? Sorry. The purple one will throw the arrow, the purple uh, bullet shooter, and then it will uh, and then the green one will catch it and it will also throw the bullet. No, it's not going to throw uh, your character to the right. What it's going to do is it's going to hide this character from the screen. And this new screen that we have made, you have lost the game. Press flag to start again. This is going to start appearing on your screen uh, like that. Let me okay. show you. Let me show you. Okay. So let's say uh, that this happens. We are going to call it user. And similarly, We are going to say congratulations on killing all the zombies. Congratulations on killing, not killing actually, I should use better word, which is eliminating all the zombies. Congratulations on eliminating all the zombies. Press flag to start again. Okay, so that's fine and that's done. I'm going to call it as winner. Now we need to set a criteria for the winner and the loser. And for that, for the loser's criteria, we have already done that. Uh, that is that if this shooter touches to this, uh, let's say, zombie, we are going to ask it to set the backdrop to the loser. But let's say that if you have to start the game again. Now if I press the flag, the game would start. But what you can see is this character, this background is not changing. So I need to tell it to change the background to the start also. Uh, so I'm going to put this code, switch backdrop to, and put it here. And just change the backdrop to backdrop one whenever the game starts and on also you can see that this um, zombie shooter is not here anymore so in order to bring it to the screen as well you are going to show this character once it has been hidden so that it starts appearing on the screen once again it can move it can shoot and it can do everything also one more thing now how do we how do we decide that if we win this game or if we lose this game? For losing this game, we have already told this shooter that if this shooter touches the zombie, you are going to lose this game. But how do you win this game? So let's say we are going to win this game if we kill 15 zombies. So where are we killing the zombies? We are killing the zombies here. If it touches the bullet, that is where we kill the zombies. So we are going to say that if we uh, make a variable and name it zombies killed, okay. 
So this variable, we are going to ask it to set itself value uh, to zero whenever the game starts and change this value by one every time you kill a zombie. So now this is going to happen. When you kill a zombie, you would see that the value of zombie scared is changing. Is it changing? It's not changing it. This zombie killed is actually not changing. Oh, sorry. This zombie killed that should be changing. So now, yes, you can see that this value is changing. So once let's say you have killed 20, 15, any number of zombies, you can say that you have won this game. Let's say that if you kill, if you manage to kill 15 zombies, you would say that I have won this game. So that code you can write anywhere, but I'm going to write it here in the zombies part. Just I'm going to use this same thing. And go to the controls and pick up another if you put it here. Tell that if equals to 50, equals 50 is found in operators, it's a green colored block. So if 20, what is 20? If zombies killed is equal to 20, if zombies killed, just put it here. If zombie skill is equal to 20, then we are going to go to looks and switch the backdrop to winner. And another thing that we need to do is tell what happens when you switch to backdrop winner. So we are going to go to this event here when backdrop switches to winner. We are going to Hide this object and show it when the game starts actually. Also, when the backdrop switches to loser, we are going to hide this object once again. And same goes for the shooter also. When backdrop switches to loser, It's going to hide the object and also when the backdrop switches to winner, it is going to hide the object. So this is what is going to happen. When you will to touch, both of them are touched or even if you let's say manage to kill 15 zombies. If you manage to kill, if you would manage to kill 15 zombies, you might be able to win this game. What I'm going to do is just stand here and start shooting in any direction that I want. Random group. Hoping that I would be able to kill 20 zombies. If you manage to kill 20 zombies, 15 zombies, 15 or 20, I'm not sure. So if let's say I have been we managed to win, let's say <laughs> 15 or 20 zombies, we would be able to win this game. Not 15, it's actually 20, which is actually very difficult to Not difficult actually, it's a lot of requires uh, a lot of time. Turn, I guess, is kind of uh, expected. So, if we are turning a little less, 10 or 15 is, I guess, uh, a little more. 
you should be turning 10 degrees only. So if you are turning 10 degrees, I guess that you will be balancing it in a better way. So keeping your twenty zombies and zombies and it says congratulations on eliminating all the zombies. Now you can press the flag to start again. Now tell me if there is anything that you guys want to ask. I will stop recording here.